Now I got a measure here. You're supposed to be six inches away from the mic. Okay, is that about right? Can you hear me? Okay, I um, at seven o'clock this morning, Audrey and I were watching on Zoom while our great grandson was being baptized in Arlington, Virginia. And if that is if that isn't enough, before the service started, we talked to. The great grandparents on the other side, Allie's, you know, the mother's side, they they were in North Carolina. <laughs> and if that isn't enough, they, they were baptized in an ELCA church in Arlington. And my daughter from uh, New Mexico, she uh, and her husband, they were sponsors. And we watched all of this at 7 o'clock this morning. Talk about modern technology, isn't it something? Yes. No, I am, am I missing something here, no? Yes. And, I'm, and his name is Adam Alexander Hunt, and he's uh, a great grandson, and we welcome him so much. Oh, I was supposed to say, good morning, everybody. <laughs> Great way to start off any day is with some good announcements there. Um, well, good morning to all of you, and we're glad to be here this beautiful day. It's been, uh, did, I don't know if you saw it up here, did you see that weird lightning? Oh, okay, down in, down in Vancouver, there was no clouds in the sky, but it was just lightning. It was kind of like a Midwest storm. It was very strange. Anyway, it doesn't matter if you haven't seen it. So it was just something that was odd to me then. <laughs> anyway, um, so let us move on to our announcements. We have, um, so on Tuesday, I am going to take a mini vacation day, and I'll be out. So the office is closed, and we do not have the um, women's Bible study, nor do we have moments by the lake. And um, on Wednesday, the office is also closed because I have a training. So I'll be doing those, those things. But... Um, on Tuesday, I'm pretty excited. I'm going to go to the Puyallup Fair. And I haven't done that since I was, like, really young. So I'm really excited. Anyway, you're supposed to be like, ooh, ah, like you were with Gil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and um, Thursday, we have our duct tape uh, time from 9 to 12. And 10 o'clock is our coffee hour. And we always need help. And so we would love to see you there. Um, or if you're just needing the coffee part of it, come at 10, and that is wonderful, too. Um, and then we will start a new Bible study on Mark. Um, it'll start online on Friday, uh, Friday, September 8th at 1030. And then the in-person Bible study will be um, after our service about 1115 on Sundays. Um, and hopefully it'll be done around the end of October. So uh, Thursday we have um, the Day of Caring, which is where we work through United Way and usually work with Family Promise in various ways. It's a great way to, great day to sign up for, and we have a sign up sheet out in the narthex. And um, on September 16th for the council members, we have a mini council retreat uh, from 10.30 to 1.00. And then we're going to have another outdoor service. Last year we tried to do this, and it was smoky, I think was the problem. But this time um, we're hoping to have an outdoor service with a potluck, which means you have to participate by bringing in the potluck part. And it'll be, it's not going to be out where it was last time. We're going to try and move it into this parking lot. So um, there'll be some spots if you need to use this parking lot, but we're going to ask people to park in the lower parking lot, and then th that way the food is more stable and it's on level ground and that kind of thing. It's, we're trying it, so hopefully that will work. And then on Sunday, October 1st, that's always a fun one, we're going to have a pet blessing. And so you may bring your pets on leashes, um, and if it flies, creeps, slithers, crawls, cage it. <laughs> I'm not, yeah. Otherwise, I'll, I'll be really far away from it. Um, and then today, we're going to welcome our new office assistant, um, Ginger Garner. And her uh, Ginger's here, and her family, uh, Justin and Cody, are here. So say hi. 
And we'll give her a, a blessing at, um, in the middle of the service, but also just make sure you say hi to her at fellowship and get to know her a little bit and her family as well. All right, with that, let's begin service. Okay, please rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. <clears throat> this kind of day. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, now and forever, whose steadfast love endures forever. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we have not followed your path, but have chosen our own way. Instead of putting others before ourselves, we long to take the best seats at the table. Hear the good uh, of a life that is free to love, free us to love our neighbors. Amen. Hear the good news. God does not deal with us according to our sins, but delights in granting pardon and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. You're free to love as God loves you. Amen. Amen. Let us sing. You may be seated. You guys may be seated. together 
fire of love in our flesh and our bones. Please pray with me the prayer of the day. Oh God, we thank you for your Son who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example, point us to the path of obedience, and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. First reading today is from Exodus 3, 1 through 15. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burning up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer. Remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have served the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on the account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their suffering, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up and out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Ammonites, the Pethorites, the Havites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has come to me. I've also seen how the Egyptians are, Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and, the, and, you, and this shall be the shine, sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you. And they asked me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, thus you shall say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. This is my title for all generations. This, we shall, on the Psalm 26, verses 1 through 8, we'll read it uh, responsively. Give judgment to me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Trust Let's me, O Lord, Lord, and try me. Examine, examine my, my heart, heart and my mind. my mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession around your altar. Sing aloud a song of thanksgiving 
and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. The second reading is from Romans 12, 9 through 21. Paul presents the bench, benchmarks for faithful relationships with Christians and non-Christians. Love is the unflagging standard of our behavior. When we encounter evil, we do not resort to its tactics, but seek to overcome it with good. While Christians cannot control the actions and the attitudes of others, we seek to live at peace with the people. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lawyer, lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone for evil, but take. Do not repay anyone for evil for evil, but take the thought for what it is noble in the sight of all. It is if it is possible, so far as depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but, relieve, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is re written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but evil overcome evil with good. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. aside and began to rebuke him saying God forbid it Lord this must this must never happen to you but he turned and said to Peter get behind me Satan you are a stumbling block to me for you are setting your mind not on divine things but on human things then Jesus told his disciples if any want to become my followers let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me for those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake will find it. For what will it profit them if they gain the whole world but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? For the Son of Man is to come with his angels in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Good morning. Grace and peace to you from the one who calls you to come near. Jesus, the only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, who comes to us in the fire. Amen. So a fire burns but does not consume. 
what a strange sight to behold. And here is a curious Moses. The fiery bush certainly has his attention. And Moses looks at the bush burning in the desert. Moses, Moses, God calls to him out of the bush. And Moses promptly says, here I am. And really, this is where it goes awry for Moses. He answered, as most of the prophets do, here I am or here am I. The Hebrew word for this is hineni, hineni. It is the concept of saying, here I am. I am ready to do anything that God asks before actually knowing what the task is at hand. It's a typical pattern in the Bible. God calls, the person responds enthusiastically, and then they find out the assignment and act like Jonah and want to run away with excuses flowing. And they end up doing what they were called to do anyway. Moses had plenty of excuses, but God threw the ball back into his court. And overall, now Moses had a very long journey in front of him, one that lasted the rest of his life. And for Moses, as it was for the other prophets, the original agreement of Hineni stands. Here I am. Through the fire, God calls to Moses and tells him to remove his sandals, for the place where he is standing is holy ground. And then Moses hides his face, for he is afraid to look at God. The people believed that they would surely die if they saw the glory of God. And so this is an important note at this point. As Moses went up and down the mountain to talk with God, his face would glow and it scared the people. So he needed to wear a veil over his face. And when Jesus died upon the cross, the veil or the curtain in the temple was torn in two. And it signified that we no longer need to hide behind the veil. We can approach God and call out, Abba, Father. But God then tells Moses that there is this assignment for him. And it's a doozy. Go to Pharaoh and ask for the people of Israel to be set free and bring them out of Egypt. Moses realizes the enormity of the task and tries to get out of it. Moses says, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And the Lord answers him, I will be with you. So we, we come back to the burning bush moment, but I want to just put in a side note about fire. While Moses' name means, for I drew him out of the water, and much of his ministry has to do with water and miracles associated with water, including the parting of the Red Sea, there's also a lot of fire in his life. Fire and cloud were the ways that God showed his presence to the Israelites. When the Israelites were wanderers, the Lord went in front of them in a pillar of cloud by day to lead them along the way and in a pillar of fire by night to give them light so that they may travel by day and by night. And so the fire of the burning bush was merely the beginning of a long relationship of God with the people. God is with Moses and God goes with Moses and with the people of Israel. And we hear these words echoed in the book of Matthew. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. God is with Moses and gives Moses the name of God, a precious gift the name by which all things are. He gives them the name Yahweh, which means I am who I am. He tells Moses to tell the Israelites that I am has sent Moses to them. 
Moses, in the next part of scripture, tells God that he does not speak well. And so God gives him his brother Aaron to be his spokesperson. But that did not get Moses out of his assignment of calling. And so it went. Now there were 10 plagues, and there was this party on the Red Sea, and a receiving of the Ten Commandments, and then 40 years of wandering. So the point is that Moses' assignment did not end with the first part, where Moses, after some considerable effort, gets the Hebrew people freed from Pharaoh and slavery. His call continued from that point on until he died. Until he died. See, God is calling, and we are filled with excuses. But regardless, when God calls, the Spirit does stir our hearts, and the words, here am I, tend to come forth. And once those words are there, the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. Once God has you, he isn't going to just let you go. Not even as sinners does God let us go. The story of the Israelites who did some major sinning is just one example of God staying with us. Emmanuel, God with us. And aren't we grateful? Aren't we grateful that the grace of the Lord is what we receive? The promise of God that God is with us through our whole lives. And God doesn't leave us out there in the desert. God is with us. In our second reading, in our Romans text, we hear of another person who ended up dedicating his life and livelihood to God. Where Moses received a burning bush, Paul received blindness. Where Moses turned to look at the fire, Paul fell because he could not see. And when his sight was restored, Paul found himself completely changed from who he was. He was a Pharisee who persecuted the Jewish converts to the point of stoning Stephen. And he chased many out of their homes. His calling made him a preacher of the good news of Jesus Christ to many corners of the earth. He had completely become the opposite of who he had been. His calling was to move from violence to preaching grace and love. And he couldn't stop sharing the message of grace. He was beaten, lashed, shipwrecked, and thrown into jails. And he continued to preach the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. He preached a loving God, not a vengeful one. He preached a God that was living and active and filled with grace and peace and love. Listen to the message again that he proclaimed in Romans where love is the standard of our behavior. Paul preaches to us these words. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil and hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal, but be ardent in spirit and serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not be claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, 
Never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I'll repay, says the Lord. No. If your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. This is just a part, just a snippet of his message. It goes on and on, letter by letter by letter. Most of the New Testament is the works of Paul. And he talks about a living and an active, loving God who shows grace through Jesus Christ. That is the calling set before us. And it's a big one. It's a big calling. That's how we're called to live as believers of Jesus Christ. Some parts of that are easier than others. Some parts are harder. In my Bible, the passage that I just read is called The Marks of the True Christian. But there's a lot of stuff in there. There's a lot of stuff in there. And I think if we just start with, with the beginning of let love be genuine, forms a pathway in front of us. Here at Bethany, there are some of these points which you do so well. Let love be genuine. You do that. Let loving one another with mutual affection and being ardent in spirit, you do that. And you certainly serve the Lord. I feel so blessed to be a part of a community of faith that truly cares for one another. What a beautiful thing. But I digress. The point is that once we are called by God, we are called by God. And we have the opportunity to serve our neighbor and to love our neighbor as ourselves. It is a big calling, and it's not always easy. We have the opportunity to live as love and grace on this earth. We love because he first loved us. We forgive because we have been forgiven. We show grace to others because from his fullness, we all have received grace upon grace. We have been saved not because of any works of righteousness that we had done, but according to his mercy through the water of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit God poured out on us richly through Jesus Christ our Savior so that having been justified by God's grace, we might become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. It's from Titus. As we go forth, let us find a place to give grace. As we go forth, let us find a place to love one another and to live into our callings as people of God. You may not have had a burning bush in your life, but you probably had something or someone that brought you here today. Hineni, here am I. God is calling you here today, and we respond because truly we can do no other. Our hearts respond. Our spirit responds to the calling of God. So we respond because it is the name of Jesus Christ that calls us. And we give thanks for our calling and for the words of Paul that call us out once again and again to show the love and grace to all through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And with that, we say, thanks be to God. Amen.
I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. I'd like to bring up Ginger and her husband Justin and son Cody. Letting, Ludington. Well, we'd like to introduce you to uh, Ginger, our new um, administrative assistant, and she'll be here Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays. Um, and this is her husband, Justin, and her son, Cody. And they are here from Ludington, Michigan, and some other places behind the scenes of that. And so we're just really grateful, and we feel just really 
thankful that she's here. And so I, wanna, I found a, um, a cool short little blessing, then I'll do a, a different one, just to keep you up here a little longer. <laughs> um, but I found a little blessing, and it says, for the first day of a new job. You are thirsty for purpose, but there is no good use quite yet. So take your time. Soak up the names and information. The details will color your tasks later on. Do not rush being new. Do not rush being received. Being granted a season to notice what has become invisible to some. May your learning and growth reshape your value and wonder for the sake of your use uncovered. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for her. Uh, holy and gracious God, we give you thanks uh, for Ginger. We thank you for her family. We thank you for um, a new era in, in this church as we, as we move out of whatever it was to whatever it will be. We thank you, God, for, um, for bringing Ginger to us, and we just pray for her time here and her ministry here, and, and pray for um, all to be well and filled with grace. In Jesus' holy name, amen. amen. So let's just hold your hands out in a blessing. We bless you and we thank you for being here and we bless your ministry here at Bethany Lutheran Church and we just pray for it to be fruitful for you and to, uh, so that you find joy in your heart. In Jesus' holy name, amen. amen. You may be seated. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Well, with that, the peace of the risen Lord be with you all. Please take a moment to uh, share the sign of peace with your neighbors and uh, to welcome uh, Ginger and her family here.
I'm going to, uh, we had our uh, blessing, but I, I don't want to, I do want to take the opportunity to pray as well. Um, our response will be, God, uh, hear a prayer. God of grace, hear a prayer. I want to start first by giving thanks to God for Gail being here today. Yes. You haven't seen her? Yeah, that is for real. We're very thankful to see you. We feel very blessed. And we want to pray, take a moment to pray for Dora and her family who lost her sister this week. Um, and pray um, pray for Ginger and, and her time here at Bethany. And we want to pray, uh, take a moment to just pray for the kids as they start back to school. And, and just for all that that means, all the new schedules and um, coming out of those summer moments and back into some type of routine, but we also pray for their safety as they <clears throat> their safety as they continue through uh, the school year. And um, we want to continue to pray for Maui and all the fires that have been uh, can, going on there and just and everywhere. The smoke that we have in our air that is making my voice pretty raspy and just keep in mind our our earth is gentle our earth is gentle uh what else would the people of god like to lift up to the lord today and lost yes kathy too who lost her brother in recent recently So we give great thanks for Shana, who has left the hospital, rang the bell, a uh, heart transplant. We are so thankful. We give thanks for a baptism of Gil's great-grandson. Yeah. I'd like to ask for prayers for John's mom, Gil's We pray for John's mom, who is still in ICU, and we just pray for her. Thank you. Uh, God of grace. Lord, we lift up all these prayers to you, those that we have spoken out loud and those we have left in our hearts, but we know that you hear us and that you are the God of answered prayers. In Jesus' holy name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us uh, start today with our doxology. Praise the Lord whom all blessings flow. for your generous offerings to Bethany and to Bethany's ministries uh, here. We are about to turn into a very busy time and we just, we miss you when you're on vacation. We're glad you're here. We miss you when you're away and we're glad you've come back and we're just, we're thankful for you. And all of that is its own offering as well. Your presence your hearts, your minds, your talents, your treasures are all part of that offering. And we thank you for all of that. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. God of your weary years, God of our silent tears, you have brought us this far along the way. In times of bitterness, you did not abandon us, but guided us into the path of love and light. In every age, you sent prophets to make known your loving will for all humanity. The cry of the poor has become your own cry. Our hunger and thirst for justice is your own desire. In the fullness of time, you sent your chosen servant to preach good news to the afflicted, to break bread with the outcast and despised, to ransom those in bondage, in prejudice, and sin. Send your Holy Spirit, our advocate, to fill the hearts of all who share this bread and cup with courage and wisdom to pursue love and justice in all the world. Come, Spirit of freedom, come. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. And he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and he gave thanks. And he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you for forgiveness of sins for all people. For the forgiveness of sins of all people. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we remember our Lord Jesus until he comes. Christ has died, and Christ is risen, and Christ will come. Amen. Uh, today we're going to hear the Lord's Prayer sung. Let us, let us receive it as a gift. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Today we heard about a calling to Moses, a burning bush that wasn't consumed. God came to Moses through the fire. The Spirit comes to us through fire and water and bird and wind. and moves within us to say, yes, Lord, here I am. Sometimes even if we're not quite sure if that's what we were going to do yesterday. It's what we're going to do today. But once we speak those words, <clears throat> once we speak those words, we are God's. We are God's children, and that call does not go away. So here, as we come to this table, we are coming to this table as people called by God to be here and to share the good news out there. And we give thanks and praise for that. All are welcome at God's table of mercy and of grace. Amen.
<laughs> for our friends online, this is the body of Christ and it is given for you. And this is the blood of Christ and it is shed for you. Amen. All are welcome. All are welcome.
First, I want to say uh, happy Labor Day. Okay, so I said that. Let us pray after communion. Pray after communion. Life giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Receive the benediction. The God of peace, the creator, redeemer, and sustainer, bless you and comfort you and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Amen. Let us sing Soul on Fire. Please rise. I'm running for your heart, I'm running for your heart, 
till I am a soul on fire. Lord, I'm longing for your ways. I'm waiting for the day when I am a soul on fire. Till I am a soul on fire. Stay for coffee. God, I'm running for your heart. I'm running for your heart. Till I am a soul on fire. Lord, I'm longing for your ways. I'm waiting for the day when I am a soul on fire. Till I am a soul on fire. Lord, restore the joy I had. I have wandered. Bring me back in this dark lead me through until all I see is you. God, I'm running for your heart. I'm running for your heart. Still I am a soul on fire. Lord, I'm longing for your ways. I'm waiting for the day when I am a soul on fire. Till I am a soul on fire. Lord, let me 